this procedure, just so you have an idea, is that her wound was right like this. And you take like a flap about this big, but you angle it like that. And uh, you do skin flaps, I mean, you just peel the skin away from it. And then you flip over the fat and adipose tissue on top of the wound. The skin that we, that we pulled to the side is all, so this side of the skin flap is tacked down underneath. And this side of the skin flap, you can see it is cut right there. Mm -hmm. So this is literally just fat and fascia. So now when I do this, I'll make sure I measure out exactly how much is needed for the flap. putting any on the regular skin and I just want it to all be isolated to the actual flap. And why again do you avoid putting it on the regular skin? Uh, you can macerate it and then just end up extending the wound like farther than you want. So you'd be worried about healing of additional wounds then. And also a skin graft uh, takes from the peripheral skin on your fear actually uh hurting the the peripheral skin around it now you're you're like kind of working against yourself sure we pad this appropriately so like a good bulky dressing over top good bulky dressing with four by four gauze over the top and along the side and then so here to make this easier on you The splint that we're going to use is going to be here. What I can do to hold this is I'll use this temporarily to hold everything in place. The splint that we're going to use is specifically going to be away from the flat. So this won't be where it is now. It'll be more, you could probably use this even for educational purposes, is you want this away from the actual flap site. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we use the splint is because we don't want her flexing or extending her wrist because with a flap anywhere on the forearm, the flexion or extension of the wrist, you could possibly rip out where it's inset, where the flap is inset, or you could even go as far to damage the actual perforators that supply the flap. So then after we do this, after you get it properly padded, Friend. Good old web roll. For padding. Way better than acrylics. Way better than acrylics because it won't stick. And if it does stick, it's easier to pull off than pulling off strands of acrylics out of a wound. They tried to pull off dry cotton at Roseville. That's a great procedural tip pretty much for, I think, any injury. You know, we're so, we use acrylics a lot, but. Yeah, acrylics is, uh, unless you have a barrier between your acrylics, uh, or you're using acrylics for a wet to dry specifically, I, I, I don't like to use it uh, on anything that it's going to be sitting in a wound and allowed to dry up. Okay. Minimum eight for an adult for plaster. Always want at least eight sheets of dealing with a real fracture, eight to 12 for an adult.
Usually I would say use hot water, but I'm okay with using this since it's just a bowl or slab splint. Cold water is fine. Get it set fast. Okay. Can you kind of flip your arm over? All right. So the flap is right there. So let's see. Do you bend your arm? Can you feel that on the flap? Mm -hmm. About right there. I can hold too. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this alternative is bias stockinette. It's essentially the same stockinette you put on before you do a cast. However, it's sterile. Sterile. It's not a uh, sleeve. It's cut out, so it's not a. It, it can't be used as a sleeve anymore. But you can control the stretch of it, and it's a uh, much uh, has much less like tensile strength. It's a little bit better. And then, even with the bias, never circumferential, just straight. Always angle it because it's technically a circumferential dressing. So when you do a circumferential dressing, you want to at least be able to angle it. Or stretch to 100% of tension and let go to 50%. So let's see. Simple tape to... Yep, simple tape, never circumferential, unless you do the same exact thing that I talked about with the bias um, with the tape, and that is, which I will do, um, is you angle, always angle, and always stretch to about 50, to about 100%, and then and then let it loose and go to about 50% of its strength. Okay, so now, now your flap I feel like is 100% at least covered. So, so now you're covered, you're padded, you have a splint in place so you won't be able to move your forearm, and, or move your wrist, I should say. It's super important, any forearm flap, you don't want, you want the wrist immobile.